The story you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring historical characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. Pedro Lopez, also known as the Monster of the Andes, is a prolific serial killer and rapist who may have murdered as many as 300 little girls in several South American countries. Lopez was caught and tried for his crimes, but was declared insane and sent to a mental hospital. In 1998, he was released on good behavior despite his vow to kill again, and no one has seen the Monster of the Andes since then. Lopez was born on October 8, 1948 in Tolima, Colombia, a time when the country was in political turmoil and crime was rampant. He was the seventh of 13 children born to a Colombian prostitute named Belinda Lopez. His father is said to be Medardo Reyes, a member of the Colombian Conservative Party, who was killed when Belinda was just three months along. When Lopez was eight, his mother caught him inappropriately fondling his little sister and she threw him out of the house. Lopez became a beggar on the violent Colombian streets where he met a kindly older man. Lopez, desperate and hungry, did not hesitate and went with the man. Lopez later recounted that this man took him to an abandoned building and repeatedly sodomized him. During the attack, Lopez angrily vowed he would do the same to as many little girls that he could, a promise he later kept. After being raped by the pedophile, Lopez became paranoid of strangers, hiding during the day and scavenging for food at night. Within a year, he left Tolima and wandered to the town of Bogota. An American couple reached out to him after feeling pity for the teen boy begging for food. They brought him to their home and enrolled him in a school for orphans. But when he was 12, a male teacher molested him. Shortly afterward, Lopez stole money and fled back into the streets. By the time he turned 18, Pedro Lopez supported himself by stealing cars and then selling them to chop shops. The police caught him and sent him to prison. Pedro Lopez claimed that he was viciously gang raped as a new prisoner. He remembered the faces of his attackers and one by one, he hunted them down and killed each one before he was released from jail. This was Lopez's first taste of murder. With so much of his childhood and youth consisting of sexual assault and rape, it is no surprise that following his release from prison, Lopez became exactly the person his own assailants had been, but he took it one step further, later confessing to the murders of over 300 girls. Once he was released from prison, Pedro Lopez discovered his appetite for young girls. He began abducting, raping, and killing little girls in villages across Peru averaging three murders each week. He later claimed that he had raped and murdered more than 100 girls by 1978 when he was caught in the act by members of a native tribe. When Pedro Lopez's perverted and deadly activities were discovered by a tribesman of a local Peruvian tribe, the tribe's elders ordered his immediate execution. An American Christian missionary who was living and ministering to the tribe pleaded with the tribe leaders to spare Lopez's life. The missionary stressed that the natives should turn over Lopez to the Peruvian police authorities and follow the country's law, rather than taking a vigilante justice approach. They relented. Lopez left the tribe with the missionary who handed him over to the state police. Once the missionary departed, the police let Lopez go free. After his close call with the Peruvian authorities, Pedro Lopez left Peru and relocated to Colombia where he continued hunting innocent young girls to a sexually assault and kill. He later moved to Ecuador where his sinister activities picked up steam. He later bragged that he was killing approximately three little girls per week, claiming that the Ecuadorian youngsters were his favorites because they were more gentle and trusting, 
more innocent. On March 9, 1980, Lopez had tried to kidnap a young girl but was disturbed by market traders and trapped until police arrived. During an interview at the police station, he confessed to more than 300 murders. The increase of missing girls was noticed by authorities, but it was concluded that they had likely been kidnapped by child peddlers and enslaved for sexual violence. Such a staggering number was hard for the police to believe, but a flash flood washed out a mass grave containing many of Lopez's young victims. Shortly after the flood, Lopez was caught trying to abduct a young girl after the child's mother intervened. The police could not get Lopez to cooperate, so they enlisted the help of a local priest, dressed him as a prisoner, and placed him in a cell with Lopez. The trick worked. Lopez was quick to share his brutal crimes with his new cellmate. When confronted by the police about the crimes he shared with his cellmate, Lopez broke down and confessed. His memory of his crimes was very clear, which was remarkable since he confessed to killing at least 110 children in Ecuador, more than 100 more in Colombia, and another 100 in Peru. Lopez admitted that he would walk the streets looking for innocent girls who he would lure away with the promise of gifts. Lopez often brought the girls to prepared graves, sometimes filled with the dead bodies of other girls he had killed. He would calm the child with soft reassuring words throughout the night. At sunrise, he would rape and strangle them, satisfying his sick sexual needs as he watched their eyes fade as they died. He never killed at night because he could not see his victim's eyes and felt, without that element, the murder was a waste. In Lopez's confession, he told of having tea parties and playing morbid games with the deceased children. He would prop them up in their graves and talk to them, convincing himself that his little friends liked the company. But when the dead children failed to answer, he would become bored and go off to find another victim. He later led police to 53 graves of more victims, all 9 to 12 year old girls. The news reports of the time gave Lopez the nickname the Monster of the Andes because of the horrific widespread nature of his crimes. Lopez stood trial for 110 murders even though he confessed to many more. For his victims of raping, killing, and mutilating over 100 children, Lopez received a sentence of life in prison. Lopez never showed remorse for his crimes. In a prison interview with journalist Ron Leithner, he said if he ever got out of prison, he would happily return to killing young children. The pleasure he received from his demented acts of murder overpowered any sense of right from wrong, and he admittedly looked forward to the opportunity to wrap his hands around the throat of his next child. In 1983, he was found guilty yet clinically insane. He was sent to a psychiatric facility to serve his sentence under the help of mental health experts. In 1998, after 20 years of solitary confinement, Lopez was released early on good behavior from the mental hospital with a $50 bail to await his murder trial. The monster of the Andes left Ecuador and has not been seen since. One of history's most depraved and dangerous serial murderers could still be alive today in continuing his murderous rampage elsewhere in the world. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.